That's what I wanted to see again. Oh, I'm hooked up. I don't know what it is, but it's big. I think it's a redfish. That's gotta be a redfish. Either that or I've got a record trout here. Oh, listen to that drag, guys. Just gonna be patient with this fish. Good thing about, good thing about the kayaks, I can just kind of nose towards you. What have I got here? This is a big fish. I mean, he's just stripping that drag out. I don't want to tighten the drag down on him. Just want to let him just keep doing his thing. Got plenty of line on this reel. Just want to... Just want to keep playing. I don't have the rod stuffed up right in the camera, guys. But having to, having to really fight this one. This is not a fish to play around with. This is the bite you're looking for when you come out here, fishing the top water. I suspect this is a redfish just by how hard it's fighting. This is a trout. This is. Pulling me because I mean I got an incoming tide here. I'm just barely, I'm just barely putting along here because I don't want to. In case he runs back on me, I don't want to be moving forward really fast and then he'll be running back and I'm trying to chase line. It's going to lose a fish. Question if this is redfish. How many inches is he? Making sure I was filming. I'd have been upset if I wasn't filming right there. <laughs> I 
Glad I opted to put the top water on the Corrado 300. That would have <laughs> that would have been a sketchy, sketchy couple of runs on the on a regular bait caster on my DC Fit 150 or the my Revos. I was saying I couldn't do it because. This is a mean fish right here though. Actually worked out perfect because he hit that bait and he was running at me. It allowed him to get a chance to get it in his mouth good. I didn't even know I was, I didn't even know he had the bait at first. I was just trying to be patient and not yank it away from him. You get so excited when you see those fish exploding on that lure like that and you want to just yank. I've done it so many times and a lot of times when you pitch back in there for whatever reason they won't hit it again and he may have but, but who knows don't get me out here in no I'm not in no deep water yet but I don't want to get out here in no deep water start, start factoring a lot of other things into the fight then Anybody that fishes salt water knows what I'm talking about. I don't even want to say the word. It's like he had, he, he should not be, be named. <laughs> don't even want to, don't even want to talk about him. Come on, come on, baby. Come on, baby. point now or maybe I should stop kicking towards him so much because I'm allowing him to stay too fresh. Oh, I love doing this. This is better than fighting a big striper right here by far. This has got a lot more power to it than a big striker. The only thing that sucks about this is he's fighting. All right, now he's starting to turn out of the sun. He's fighting dead into the sun there for a little while. Listen to him pulling that drag off. He's trying to take me out in the deep water. That's his whole goal in this. Just be patient. Don't get too excited here. fish. The guy that fishes down here all the time, he might try to horse this fish in because he gets this opportunity a lot more than I do. But when you don't live in a place, coming down, your one of your main goals is to catch big fish. Try new things. Specific to catching fish. <laughs> Try new types of catching fish. The only thing thing, it lets me know that when I see that bait getting chased, this is a good top water to throw in there to them. Buy me a couple more of these dang things. I never even used them. H2O Express by Academy. I mean, I love their lures. I've had to use plenty of their lures. I just never used one of these specific ones. So, kind of a bummer. 
chrome white color with a real bright orange belly. And it seemed to be seems to be working really good. I was using yesterday a mirror lure. It's a glow color mirror lure with a high pitch rattle in it. And I put a zoom or a, sorry a Zara spook on bone colored there was no rattle in it and I was getting a few bites if I noticed that I wasn't getting near as many bites I put this rattle and I had this H2 Express on I said well it's a lot like a little smaller profile skinnier lure but same length and maybe actually even just a touch longer than what that other that mirror lure was put that rattling lure on this one yesterday it seemed like a big difference I started getting a lot of bites didn't catch anything like this I promise you I got a lot of bites had a lot of fish exploding on the lure which gave me a lot of confidence in continuing to use it today I mean there's no reason in changing a lure that fish are biting and white seems to be the key something with white in it don't even like where you've taken me right now redfish I just I don't like it even one little bit and I like that you have me in open water and I don't at the same time for a lot of factors high card in that regard. Come on, bad boy. He is just horsing me down there. It's a mostly him battle. Well, he's gonna take me all the way across here to this sand shelf. How long I've been on at this point. Be interested to go back and look at the footage to see how long this fight has occurred. Try not to get too pump happy. Just try to just keep good tension on him. Just reel down good and slow. I think I've got him tired. started using this boat as an anchor. I was swim I was paddling towards him a lot, but I think that worked out to my favor because I was able to get him out into open water and he was up in that inlet. There's a lot of sharp shell and all kinds of stuff on the bottom in there for him to potentially run across. Out here I have a whole other factor at play potentially. But we're just gonna pray that that's not a factor today. And I just want to see this fish. I want to see what he is. What is this? Got him. He's not too far away now. Got him almost straight down and tight. So I'm going to quit pedaling towards him because I don't want to get him too up and down. I don't have a tuna rod here. He'll t start taking off straight to the bottom. And he takes off and down. I'm, I'm done. He's going to break a rod or the line or both. Oh. 
you just go ahead and get this get that right there get it accessible oh no worry about getting the net and I let it get caddy wampus on me here Whatever it was that was chasing that bait was big, and that's why I pedaled up in there. And you know, I don't know how many times I've done that. See fish moving. I go run over there to try to catch that fish and never get a bite. But you know what? If you know there's a fish there, it's free to go be curious and investigate. And in my perspective, unless you have some amazing graph that's telling you exactly where the fish are and you know that you've got the best spot underneath you or on your you're on the track to it, if you see a fish, go make I mean if you see that fish activity, go make a casting. I mean, what does it hurt? So all I did in this situation was go and start fishing that weed line and I was a little disappointed at first because I pitched down that whole weed line and didn't get any fish but what I think was happening is I, was, I think it was a pack of fish because it seemed like there was a couple of fish in there blowing up and they were going out and they were coming up out of that channel the deeper channel and they were chasing those big mullet they were big horse mullet they were chasing so I knew and I seen them exploding on them. The, the mullet weren't just running. The mullet are very flighty. So, I mean, if, if a little bitty speck the same size as them ran underneath them, they would run and jump out of the water. But when you see something exploding on a bait fish that big, you know that it's not a baby fish. And I knew it wasn't a shark, by the way. It was, you could hear it. It sounded like a black bass, but just huge. Black bass or big striker is what it sounded like from what I've ever heard. Here they have a big striper and they'll get to school in those big shad back home. Or if you're an East Coast guy out in the ocean, I've just never done that. That's a that's a bucket lister for me. To chase those big East Coast striper. But today we're catching sea beasts. I say that because I don't know what this is. I'm, I, it's got to be a redfish, I think. <laughs> Good grief, if I've got a speckled trout on, I'm going straight back there to that state park and I'm getting it certified. This is probably a record. holding me down he's big and I don't want to get crazy I don't want to get on top of him okay okay calm down calm down uh 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 uh-uh. Don't even like getting that line close to the kayak. Exactly what I was talking about. When you got a fish this big, you do not want to let that line touch anything. I don't even like it when my finger touches the line. Me all backwards. Get turned around on this fish. Okay. 
He's just spinning me in a circle right now, and he knows it, I think. I can't catch up with this fish. He's just going in a circle. Got him pinwheeling around my kayak. Not the best kind of pinwheel. Creates a lot of added stress. I managed to so far maneuver out of it. This fish is big. Those, that's the tail wags. Turn around this fish while I can get something on him. She's getting tired. Those tail wags have always been big and long. Ooh. I see some color guys. Got him up on top. That's gotta be a redfish as big as that body is on that fish. Again, I'm not the saltwater expert. I'm not sure exactly how big a trout gets, but. <laughs> I do not believe they get this size. circles this is a big smart fish right here do not do that buried me straight down I, that's telltale big fish maneuver Sitting here, been waiting on it. When they lose, when they start losing the battle, they take desperate measures. And I don't know how they know it, but. That's their, probably one of their better options at that point is just to take off and run straight down to the stinking bottom. Cause it puts you in all kinds of bind. Down and under is the worst, and that's what he pretty much just did to me. I, I'm still not even sure what I've got, guys. Like when I seen the fish, I wasn't I'm not even sure it's a red fish. It looked like it might even be a big jack, Cravel. Of course, your eyes start playing tricks on you when you, you don't get a good look at a fish and you just see a big body. That's the second or third time you've done this to me. You've gotten up on the top and you start doing circles around me where I can't do anything to you. I don't know if y'all can hear the frustration in my voice, but he's starting to irritate me a little bit. I'm hooked up. Good Lord.
He's taking it all from me. Legs, arms. Good grief. Just spinning, 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 spinning. Again, he's spinning. Just... This is a smart fish. He just keep, he's just mentally just wearing me out doing this spinning. He's consistent in which direction he's doing it, but it's just. I can't keep him, in, can't keep him from, from doing start circles on me. I mean, he's still just, no matter how much I pedal to the right. I've just been sitting here doing donuts and donuts and donuts and donuts and donuts. Anybody that's watching this out there is going, what is that guy doing? Unless they can see that I've got a rod boat up. Remember that crazy guy in the kayak that just kept doing circles out in the middle of the channel, everybody? We need a water break after this. Maybe a little trail mix. <laughs> My morning workout in. I like fighting fish with light tackle, but I almost wish I had a bigger rod at this point. I could have done with this fish, I imagine. But I got this. You know, I'm fishing with basically bass equipment for, for most for most people. This is a big one. Of course. Oh, you really did it this time. He did a... Alright, I'll just let you... I'll just let you do a circle around me. I literally had to do the rod over my head. Over my head. Anybody with shoulder trouble, that, that fight's over with. literally had to spin the rod around in my hand over my head trying to keep it from ever bending backwards because you don't want to do that a big fish like this good way to break a rod in half you break a rod in half and the fight is likely over because that's usually the line too I actually worked out to my favor because I'm fighting him to a different side of the boat the kayak than I was. I had to do it again. You know what? scarier but it's easier than trying to pedal in a stinking circle and chase the guy because now he's just wearing himself out I know y'all had a rod buried in y'all's face GoPro for the most part of this fight, but I'm sorry. There's not a lot I can really do about that. Oh my goodness. Just spinning again. Oh. 
Oh, I don't like that. I have to do the rod over my head again. I guess I'd have, I'd rather him run around one side or the other of the kayak than just straight underneath it. strong fish I'll give you that I'll give you that all day sir he just got me buried you can take back five or six feet like that you gotta do it best battle I've ever had in the kayak regardless of what happens at this point guys always wanted an epic battle like this in the kayak I think this is a big jack what the heck slob city whatever it is I think this is a big jack. Which for all reason that's weird is just being up in the bay like that. Figured I figured it would have been a redfish all day long. <laughs> I'm literally beginning to wonder if my net's even gonna be of use. keeping up but this thing is testing my fighting skills to the max and my grip to the max i'm having to hold on just to the grip of this rod as he pulls it around over my head at this point there's just no really way for me to keep up with him spinning around the boat i mean i could try to i guess My lord, my lord. Does this fish ever give up? No wonder this fish wanted to go to deep water. That's all he knows.
fish, I mean, this fish pulled me an eighth of a mile, maybe a quarter of a mile, and just like actual distance. And total distance, it's been over a mile, I guarantee you, as far as all the circles and loops. <laughs> he had me so buried right there. <laughs> He's smart, staying right underneath the kayak. He's about to come up and do a side, side flop on his side. Though. He's getting tired. Yeah, that's definitely a, a jack or something. Got a yellow tail, it ain't no redfish. It, it almost looks like a yellow tail, which I don't even think those things live around here. I know a jack's got a big old yellow tail though, and just more likely what it is. Not the ocean expert over here, freshwater guy. I think my stamina is proving it right now. I'm getting more out, more smooth out. This fish. Good news is I think he's getting tired too. He was kind of on his side when he was coming up just then. I just don't want to give up. Cause this fish don't know how to give up, I don't think. This fish came in here on these high tides. It's the only reason something this big would come in here. Well, I say, I say that. The only reason something of this type would come in here right now is just on the tides. Get away from that kayak. Golly. Yep, that's a big old Jack Crevel. Absolutely what this is. And he's in the net. I, I guess you'd call it that. Have y'all been wondering why I've been struggling? Let me get the rod. Oh my lord! The hook came out in the net. <laughs> <laughs>